the crowd has realized it. He has lost the Tour de France by eight seconds. Can you believe that? From being the world's most talented cyclist to becoming a mediocre rider inside the bunch. This is a story of a man who has seen death but was not ready to give up on his dreams. A legendary comeback that is worthy of revisiting. Cinq, quatre, trois, deux, un, deux. If you were to ask any cycling fan back in the mid 80s on which rider that's going to have the most success in the following decade, the answer would have probably been Greg LeMond. This naturally gifted cyclist dominated the 1986 Tour de France after his 25th birthday and became the first American winner of this race. He was looking to defend the title in 1987 and go on a winning streak to fulfill his vision of becoming one of the all-time greats of this sport. However, his racing schedule got interrupted due to injury. He broke his wrist following a crash in an early season race. It wasn't a severe injury, but he needed to stay off the bike for a few months. He returned to the United States to spend the recovery time with his family. Later in the spring, and just as he was about to return to race in Europe, Greg decided to go turkey hunting with his brother-in-law and his uncle. As they parted ways in the valley, his brother heard movement coming from a bush right behind him. There was a good chance a turkey was behind that noise. His shock was dreadful after seeing what he just shot down. Greg, lying on the ground, half conscious, his clothes were bloodstained and he was hardly breathing. He was hit with approximately 60 shotgun pellets in his back and in his right side, which caused his right lung to collapse. In between life and death, Greg was transported to the hospital by helicopter. He had already lost 65% of his blood by the time they got there. The doctors told his family that he had been within 20 minutes of bleeding to death. After undergoing two hours of surgery, his condition finally became stable. Even though he still had 40 of these fragments in his body to this day, some of which are located in his heart and his liver. The following weeks were hell for him. He recalls that some nurses, who did not know who he was, refused to give him pain medication. They assumed that he was one of the inmates that were being treated at that same hospital. Some of these inmates do pretend to be in pain in order to get morphine just to get high. Throughout the following 12 months, he underwent three other operations. And while he was dealing with that, his team decided to drop him. He then signed a new contract with a Dutch team for the 1988 season. However, they insisted that he should be back racing before having fully recovered. This sparked tension in their relationship, and it got worse after he learned about the doping that was going on in the squad. This unhealthy tension, added to his physical suffering, took its toll on the man. He realized that he was not the same as before, with a deteriorating body that's still carrying those shotgun pellets. All signs indicated that a comeback to his top level was very unlikely. Going from winning the Tour de France in 86 to literally, I was laughed at. You could see the directors kind of smiling, honking, laughing. Literally, um, I heard this like, oh, I don't know how to explain it. On December the 31st, 1988, the American rider signed a contract with a Belgian team called ADR just hours before the closure of transfers window. It was a team that's made up of classic specialists. With no climbers in the squad, Le Monde knew he was going to ride alone in the high mountain stages, but he had no other option but to sign this contract. Throughout the first half of the 89 season, Greg was finally racing consistently. 
He kept on pushing forward, yet always failed to get in contention in the key stages. With results above average at best, he looked like a shadow of his old self. And for some time, it felt like his career as a professional cyclist was coming to an end. After finishing 39th in the Tour of Italy, he decided to quit professional cycling, but not before racing the Tour de France for one last time, a race that he truly loves. Three years after his last participation, the American was back at the Tour. No one rated him a serious contender for the title, however. He himself wasn't that optimistic. The best case scenario he envisioned was to get a place among the top 20 riders in the overall classification, then retire right after finishing in Paris. But when the race was on... The American causes a sensation. He has won the stage and the yellow jersey. Le Monde sees the yellow jersey on stage five. An extra long race of truth in which he displayed his superior time trialing ability. Without the weight of expectations, the pressure of the competition was non-existent. He held the jersey for three days before he lost it on stage nine to the French rider Laurent Fignon. A two-time winner of this race and the winner of the previous Tour of Italy, he was the top favourite to win this yellow jersey and he had the whole of France behind him. Greg had to keep a close range to the wheel of the Frenchman as he had no domestiques to carry him through the Alps. It was a back and forth battle in which the yellow jersey was being exchanged multiple times between the two. On stage 15, Le Monde reclaimed the yellow jersey after a solid performance in an uphill time trial. So, the yellow jersey is back on the American shoulders. Three days after, Fignon was once again in yellow. At the end of the penultimate stage, the yellow jersey settled on the shoulders of the French cyclist. Greg was 50 seconds behind in second place. Everyone says the tour is over. That Fignon's new lead of 50 seconds is too much for Le Mans to make up. It seems that Fignon's crown is safe for the final showdown in Paris. Stage 21. It had always been considered an uncontested ride through the beautiful avenues of Paris. But this time, the organizers made a major modification. A solo time trial instead of the traditional road race stage. It was a short one though, in the eyes of pundits, this 24.5 kilometer flat stage wasn't long enough to bring about change in the overall standings. Once he arrived in Paris, the words of praise and congratulations rained down on the professor. The French fans were getting ready to celebrate their champion. That gave him a false sense of confidence. Greg Lemond, in contrast, made sure he had everything prepared. Unlike most of the participants, he wore an aero helmet and used extended handlebars, which was a new thing at the time. This allowed him to ride in a more aerodynamic position, minimizing air resistance. He knew that he had to produce the best ride of his life in order to turn the tables. On the bike, he looked like a man on a mission, going faster than ever giving it everything he could. Two greatest athletes in this year's Tour de France and in the world of cycling are battling out now. A point of honour, a point of pride for the greatest finish in the Tour de France. Not only that, Phil, but he's going to also win the stage, I think, because look at that time, Phil. This is the most incredible thing I think I've ever seen in my life. As he hit the finish line, his job at the Tour de France was done. His remarkable 26 minutes and 57 seconds ride put him way ahead of everybody else in the stage ranking. Now he has to wait for his rival's result and hope for the best. If we do the maths, the French cyclist has to finish the stage in under 27 minutes and 47 seconds to keep the yellow jersey. If he doesn't, the American wins the Tour de France. Voilà, 10 secondes.
monde. 9, 10 secondes pour 200 8, mètres, pas possible. 7, 6, 6 c'est vraiment 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, top Laurent Fignon a perdu le Tour de France 89. Greg Lehmann l'emporte. Greg en médaillon ici sur l'image proposée par Pierre Vanel. After 3,500 kilometers of racing, the gap between these two men was no more than eight seconds, the closest margin ever between the winner and the runner-up in the 120 years history of this competition. And it's one of the reasons cycling enthusiasts regard the 1989 Tour as the most entertaining edition of this race. Greg Le Mans' unexpected Tour de France victory brought significant media attention some journalists called it the greatest comeback sports I've ever seen. Not only had he overcome a significant time deficit, he had also won the tour after coming back from a near-fatal hunting accident. The US media celebrated him like a national hero, and he was named the Sportsman of the Year. His comeback didn't end right there. He became a world champion one month after that, and came back the following year to dominate the Tour de France. And to this day, the world of sports has yet to see another comeback story of this magnitude. If you know a similar cycling story, feel free to share it with us in the comments section. Support the channel by liking the video and subscribing. Thanks for watching.